السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له Verily all praises due to Allah whom we seek his help and forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evils that we conceal and from the consequences of our evil deeds Whosoever Allah grants guidance will never be led astray and whosoever he leads astray will never find guidance وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ And I attest that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I attest that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله This is your brother Rayyan Fawzi Arab in the program The Da'wa Workshop I would like to welcome my dear viewers and I would like to welcome my respected guests in this episode inshallah and not only in this episode but in this entire program these 30 episodes we are going to learn how to do da'wah we are going to be effective in da'wah we are going to cover things that you don't usually see on a TV program things that are covered in a classroom as a matter of fact things that are covered in a workshop a training course exactly this is what we're gonna turn this into a workshop so what I want you to do mr. viewer and your sister I want you to take out a pen and a paper and take some notes and interact with us search for the Facebook page the da'wah workshop and put in your comments put in your questions so that you could take part of this program and become an eligible effective day one with eloquence and style one who is able to do da'wah one who is able to start a da'wah conversation speaking of a da'wah conversation let me introduce to you the objectives of this program inshallah so by the end of this program you will be able to have brighter knowledge in da'wah yes you will have brighter knowledge in da'wah you probably know so much about da'wah but there is always room for more you will be able to do da'wah one on one you will have the skills, you will have the abilities, only and only if you pay attention. You will be able to start a da'wah conversation and you will have communication skills. Communication skills is something very important in da'wah. You will understand what da'wah is, the different types of da'wah, is da'wah important? You will understand the obligations of da'wah, the objectives of da'wah, the benefits of da'wah. You will even understand the mad'u. Do you know what a mad'u is? Probably not, but we will talk about that insha'Allah. And you will know the different styles of da'wah, the means of da'wah. And last but not least, we will have Q&A interactive sessions, we will take phone calls, and we will make this the show. The show for you not to miss, the da'wah workshop. So let me introduce my dear brothers. We have brother, may you introduce yourself. I'm Ahmed Shafi, I'm an English teacher. MashaAllah. Ahmed al-Shafi'i, English teacher. Where are you from? I'm from Egypt. You're from Egypt. Yes. Where in Egypt? Uh, al -Jiza. Great. Yeah. Ahmed, how many years have you been doing da'wah for? I've been doing da'wah for over 12 years. MashaAllah. 12 yes. years? Over 12 years of da'wah? Yes. This means you have invited so many people to Islam, yeah? Invited not so many people to Islam, but invited Muslims <laughs> invited Muslims to Islam yeah totally great and we're gonna talk about yeah. that inshallah just remind me yeah okay. because this is not necessarily da'wah when you invite a Muslim this is called Islah you yeah. rectify it but when you invite a non-Muslim this is what this is yeah. da'wah yeah. and we're gonna identify da'wah inshallah we're gonna get inshallah. deeper into that so tell me what is one of the most difficult things you have faced when speaking to a Muslim about Islam actually one of the most difficult things I've faced when I talking to them is that the uh, uh, the they are not interested in what you have so they, they just they are satisfied of uh, of being non-muslims and they don't want to to be Muslim so why do you bother mm. Mm -hmm. so most Muslims are not satisfied with being Muslims or is this a few minority um, 
no, they are satisfied of being like this, so we, uh, we don't want to change. Yeah, yeah, great. We'll have to get into that, and we'll have to talk more about that, inshallah. Of course, nice to meet you, brother Ahmed. Alhamdulillah. Nice yes, sir? Uh, my name is Idris, and I'm from uh, the States, America. You are from the United States of America. MashaAllah. Yes. Idris, where in the United States are you from? From the Maryland and Washington, D.C. area. All right, great. Idris, you live in Egypt? Uh, now, right now, I live in, uh, in Egypt, in Giza. And how long have you been a Muslim for? Wait, you uh, converted, yeah? Yes. You were originally a non-Muslim then? Yes. No, wait. You were originally a Muslim. Then you became a non-Muslim. Yes. Then you became a Muslim, yeah? Yes. We'll talk about that, inshallah. Yeah. So tell me more about how you converted to Islam. What was, don't tell me the whole story. Just tell me what was that touch, that thing that made you get inspired to become a Muslim? Honestly, the, what made me learn and want to become Muslim was when I first started learning about, uh, I had a gentleman teach me about Tawheed, something that I never really know or understood or any, had, had any, any knowledge about at all before yeah, but Islam. Did he teach you the three types of Tawheed and you were a non-Muslim? So yeah. he, he taught you like Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed He didn't use these names, but... Okay, <laughs> yeah, because you would have found it like yes. awkward, yeah? <laughs> he spoke to me in English. Uh, actually, the guy was Somali. In, I, was in, I was in Mogadishu, but he spoke to me in English about these concepts. Okay. That I never really knew about, and it, it intrigued me, and I, and I found it to be true. And from there, I started the journey. Within a few weeks, I became Muslim. Masha Allah. So after he taught you the basics of Tawheed, monotheism, and Tawheed means Islamic monotheism, that is the belief in one God. After he taught you that, you started doing your research about Islam to gain more knowledge about this deen, then you converted, yeah? Sort of, but sort I, of. Did, I didn't really do much research, I learned everything through him. I was actually in Mogadishu, I was in the military at the time. So. MashaAllah. This is the thing, Alhamdulillah, we have many people come into Islam daily, many people. Hundreds of thousands, not daily, but let's say every year we have about 100,000, maybe a little bit more, people worldwide come into Islam. All they need is somebody to take that initiative and to start to invite them to Islam. And this, inshallah, is what you are going to be able to do soon. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Yes, brother? Uh, my name is Ali Umar Al-Ghazali. I'm Egyptian. Uh, I was born uh, in the United Arab Emirates and I spent 10 years over there. And then I came to Egypt. Uh, I'm a student at Al Azhar University, and uh, I, I'm, I'll be graduating in two years, inshallah. MashaAllah, brother Ali. Yes. Have you been to UK before? <laughs> no, I've never been to the you, UK. You sound like a British man. Yeah, that's because I um, <laughs> I deal with people from the UK uh, on a daily basis. I have many friends from the UK. Muslim or non-Muslim? Uh, most of them Muslims who came to Egypt to study. Uh, the, the Arabic to study Quran and sometimes I help them with the Arabic and they help me with my English as well so yeah uh, do you think language could be a barrier in da'wah? Uh, of course it is a barrier uh, it, I mean sorry not language the accent itself do you think an accent could be a barrier? I, I, don't, I don't think so uh, once you have like once you know a language uh, you know the basic uh, words and the basic grammar of a language you can give da'wah to the native speakers of that language. You don't have to be an eloquent or like a perfect uh, speaker of yeah, that language. I see. Because yeah. I remember about a year and a half ago, one of my colleagues at work, he was saying, I love to do da'wah. I want to invite people to Islam. But when I chat with them or talk to them about Islam, the Americans, they say, you have an accent. I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> well, I can, re I can respond to that by saying, look at Zakir Nai, for example, and Ahmad Didad. They had Allah. an accent. Uh, and some people, you know, uh, and many, many people convert to Islam uh, thanks to Allah and then to, to the, the person who is yeah, doing the da'wah. Like Zakir Naik, for example. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. All right. Great to meet you. And inshallah, you will be an inspiring da'i by the end of this program. Inshallah. Thank you. That is if you aren't already. And I think you are. <laughs> All of you look like you are courageous da'is, mashallah. Yes, brother? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. I'm called Abdullah Amir. I'm 25 years old. I uh, graduated from Azhar University, alhamdulillah, last year, and I'm from Egypt. MashaAllah, Brother Amir, you have a beautiful smile. Jazakumullah khayra. Wajazak. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Amen. So, Brother Abdullah, mm -hmm. now, why do you think many people fear giving da'wah? 
because they lack the knowledge they don't know like why they're Muslims so unfortunately they, they, I mean like the people who were born as a Muslim like you know um, if you're a Muslim you just like follow like you know people like you know we're asking you like you pray like like people you you do things like you know as people like, if, if you were raised like in a wrong way I'm, I'm speaking like you know if you if you raise your parents didn't teach you why you're Muslim like you know about monotheism about like I kind know of why you do this why you do this why you do this all these things so like when you're being like in touch with like when you had the chance to give da'wah you don't know what to say, so you avoid it. Mm -hmm. Or like you're not good at it, or like you're not getting encouraged, encouraged like you know from yeah. people. So, but but there is a solution to this. Yeah, for I mean, sure. well, obviously so this is a problem. Yeah, and it's so easy. Well, I, I I found like so many people they want to give da'wah and like they are so motivated, but they lack the knowledge, or like they lack the, or like they have the knowledge, they don't know how like you know the right way, or like they don't know about the other, like you know the matter, like a lot of the, the, the skills. Know. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know like okay. how to address them. We have different people, different styles, different things. Like you should know the right way to deal with everyone. Mm -hmm. sure. Great. And um, one thing I want to stress about is that many people want to give da'wah, they mm -hmm. have the motivation, but yet they are scared. Yeah? It's like they are scared of the reaction of the mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. What is this person going to say to me? Mm -hmm. um, what if he hits me? What if he throws a brick at me? Let me not do da'wah to him. Yeah? Yeah. But I would say, don't be scared. Exactly. I mean, let's say, worst case scenario, he does throw a brick at you. <laughs> you know what I would say? Yeah. Take this brick. Build yourself a house. Exactly. Call him over to dinner and give that to him again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you something. Like happened to me like four years ago when I was in the states. I uh, was the MSA president, the Muslim Student Association president, and I was like being asked so much, "Why you do this? Why you do this?" Like I was like kind of the representative at this at this like place, and I was like feeling overwhelmed by these questions and stuff. So I, I ran away like, to my home, listening, listening to like, khutbahs, like, watching videos, reading, doing some stuff, and get more knowledge while giving da'wah. So you start da'wah and you get knowledge. Don't wait until you have the, the full, like, you know, understanding of Qur'an and Sunnah and everything and the skills. Just start with, with, the, with the proper way, for sure, the proper knowledge in, in your scale, in small scale, and then you find yourself, mashallah, increasing, going like that. SubhanAllah. Let me add something to this. Sure. Many people, they don't have the intention to do da'wah. Mm -hmm. They travel abroad, they go out and invite they go out and get educated and suddenly somebody comes to them and asks them mm -hmm. a question and what happens when they get asked that question they start doing the research just as brother Abdullah did his research yes. then he became an effective da'i mashallah I wish inshallah exactly I'm, I'm working we will be taking a break inshallah and we will be back please don't go anywhere because we have some inspiring stuff that we want to share some inspiring stuff that will touch your hearts inshallah salam alaikum so let me stray Please come away Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk on your favorite channel Huda TV I'm your host Arkham Rashid They actually did uh, such and such that you're accusing him of in your mind uh, so now I want to start off with my right hand side, uh, Brother Ahmed. If you can just tell us what your thoughts were on that video, what can you extract from that video? Would you say some of the youth uh, turn to drugs, especially you know in your country, if if they don't have jobs or you know it's because they want to get away from their daily normal lives? Would you say that's okay, a reason? Absolutely, that? that's true. Some people just resort to drug as the last option because they they get themselves straight out and they're instead of depression, but they don't know where to turn for help. Sports per se is like a, a communal social activity, whereas mm -hmm. it, you know, it collects the community together and it, it bonds brotherhoods together, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's very social in this aspect where you interact with you know, your teammates or your players in a team. So I think um, a message would be just to stay completely away, away from, from it. it. Even we can say, oh look, it's haram. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah. Welcome back my dear viewers, here we are in the da'wah workshop in the very first episode. 
We have introduced our brothers who are with us, the participants in this program for today, and we are talking about why so many people fear giving da'wah. Why is da'wah important? Why should we know about da'wah? Why should we even do da'wah? We're going to delve into this insha'Allah. We're going to gain more knowledge about this. But first, we want to ask the brothers, why do you think many people fear giving da'wah? And dear viewers, what I want you to do is take down some notes and write the answer down why you think many people fear giving da'wah and I want you to share that question, the answer to the question on the Facebook page. So let's start with Brother Ahmed. Why do you think many people fear giving da'wah? Some people, the, uh, they fear giving da'wah because they don't want to, um, to picturize something bad about Islam. They, they see that I'm not perfect myself, so if, uh, if I'm uh, trying to spread the word of Islam or invite uh, others to uh, da'wah, they are going to look at me and I'm not a good example myself, so no, I won't do it. And uh, I'm afraid of, uh, of you know, giving a bad impression for people mm -hmm. about this. So yeah. this is one of, I believe, one of the major... So this is, <coughs> this is actually a good fear, yeah? Yeah. For you to fear of giving the wrong impression. I mean, this reminds me, a few years back, I was working in an airline. Mm -hmm. And this airline had some non-Muslims. Okay? And one of the non-Muslims was Dutch. And he was a very tall guy. This guy was scary. You know, even when I would see him in the hall, I would get scared of him. What scared me about him is that one time when he first got hired, I walked into his office and he was on the phone. And I walked in because I wanted to share something with him. And he looked at me and he's like, don't you see I'm on the phone? Get out! <laughs> so then I got out and closed the door. After that, I decided not to speak to him again. So every time I would see this guy, I would be afraid to approach him. But then I delved deep into seeking knowledge about da'wah and gaining more skills. And I said, listen, if this is an obligation, then this is something that really needs to be done. I mean, I cannot just look at the guy and not invite him to Islam in any way. In any way, whatever way you can. Even if it's in an email, even if you're scared to speak to him, send him an email or write a letter to him or just share a pamphlet with him or a book or something about Islam. Yes or no? Yes. And there is a verse in the glorious Quran that inspires us so much to do da'wah and it starts with, وَلْتَكُنْ Brother Ahmed, would you mind share this, sharing this verse with us, please? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولتكن منكم أمة يدعون إلى الخير ويأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون Allahu Akbar, MashaAllah. Let there arise amongst you a group of people who call to good, they enjoy what is good, they forbid what is evil, and it is they who are the what? The successful, successful people. They do three things. These people do three things. Number one, they enjoy good. Number two, they forbid, they enjoy good, they do good, and they forbid evil. These are the three things. Number one, they do good, they call to good. Number two, they enjoy good. Number three, they forbid, they forbid evil. The result is that they are the most successful people. Okay. Subhanallah. Now, yeah. let's just do a scenario right here. Let's imagine that you are working for a company. Give me a name of any clothing company. One of the most famous clothing companies. Yeah. Any. What comes to your mind? I love American Eagle. I hate to <laughs> Sorry? I love American Eagle. <laughs> American Eagle? Okay, now we're doing some advertising for companies. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so what is, the, what is more famous? Because people don't even know that. Uh, Timberland, uh, Adidas. Let's go, let's go beyond that, even Nike. more famous. Nike. Okay, great. Now let's say you work in Nike, okay? You just recently got hired yeah. in Nike. Now the owner of Nike, he is the owner and he is the one who gave you that position. Well, he probably doesn't know you face to face, but he knows that somebody is working in my company. Yeah. But wait a minute. Does he really know that somebody is working in his company? I mean, does he know that you are working in his company if he didn't hear about no. your results and about what you are doing in that company? No. Yeah? No. Now, let's say you work in Nike and as soon as you work in that company, you start calling people to Nike and you start selling them products like crazy. Yeah? And you are the reason they earn millions of dollars. Now, the boss, the owner, the president, is he going to reward you or what? Of course. 
Yes. Yeah? What is he going to reward you with? Yes. A high position? Yes. Yeah? A high status? Free clothes? Yes. Perhaps, right? And a car. A car? <laughs> serious life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Imagine life. how it is when you work with the creator of that boss yes. and the creator of that universe, of this universe. SubhanAllah. Imagine when you invite people to Islam and you call people to good and you forbid people from doing evil. This is what Allah wants you to do. Yeah? There is a verse in the glorious Quran that says they are the best people. Who can share that verse with me? Subhanallah. And who is better than him who calls people to Allah and he says, I am a Muslim. Who is better than these people? <coughs> Nobody. So this is the highest status, yeah? There are levels and statuses. This is the highest status. If you pray, you get a high status. No doubt. If you fast, you get a high status. If you read the Quran, you're up there. But if you do da'wah, you're all the way up here. Why? Because yeah. Allah said in the glorious Quran, who is greater than these people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who is greater than them? SubhanAllah. But there is an important thing we want to stress here is that some people start doing da'wah and they forget about prayers. Mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. So there are obligations that we need to focus on that are very important, such as the five pillars of Islam. Then comes da'wah. I mean, this reminds me, the other day a person came to me and um, he is inspired. He wants to do da'wah. He attended some lectures here and there and he said, I want to do da'wah. What should I do? So when I looked at him, I, I felt that the person is kind of away from the deen, somewhat. So I didn't want to discourage him. I wanted to encourage him more. So what kind of advice do you think I, would, I gave that person? So come and watch us doing it. Okay. Or ask Allah to help you do it. Oh, Good yeah. one. I seek the knowledge and the means of da'wah. Mm hmm Abdullah? I would say like, you know, ask Allah to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you'll be closer to, to His, like asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you closer to Allah first, which you, like, what, what do you want to say, like, to tell Him or ask Him, like in, like in sandwich feedback, something like this, and then you, uh, He'll be closer Great. to Allah. For Him to build a relation with the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Him to build a connection with Allah. Mm -hmm. If you want Allah to help you with something, then you have to be on the path of Allah. We cannot worship Allah with our own uh, ways of worships, yet yeah? We're following a curriculum. What is this curriculum? His Quran and Sunnah. His Quran the Quran and, and the Sunnah, and yeah? The sunnah. So if we take something and leave something out, is this okay? No, no it's not. Who did this? There is a religion, people of a book, who did this? They took some things Yahud. and applied it, and they left some things out. Come again? Yahud. Yahud. The they are the, the Jews. Jews. The yeah? Jews. They took some things and... They left some things out. So if we do this, then we're not considered Muslims. Why? Because we left out the basics, the pillars of Islam. So for example, if I want to take five daily prayers, but I don't want to do zakah, then in this case, I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a complete Muslim. Why? Not a complete Muslim. I'm not a Muslim at all, because I don't want to do it. There is a difference between laziness and a difference between not wanting to do it, not doing it at all, disbelieving in doing it. Yeah. So let's go back into da'wah. This person, I told him, you have to build a connection with the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you build that connection, Allah will give you the ways. Allah will give you the keys. And He will give you the path to da'wah so that you can convey the message of Islam to the people worldwide. But before we talk about worldwide, we have to talk about somebody. Who is that? Myself. Myself. Exactly. Before I want to go out and do da'wah with others, and I have to do da'wah to myself first. Yeah? I have to apply. I did this series once on YouTube. It's called Start With Yourself. Okay? And what I talked about was how to start with yourself before starting with others. Because we get this a lot. Many people want to change the world. You hear this a lot. I want to change the world. I want to be Superman. I want to do this. I want to do that. But rarely do you hear a person saying, I want to change myself. Yeah? 
Right. And there is a verse in the glorious Quran that talks about this Ahmed. You know that verse? A verse where it says, mm -hmm. start with yourself in a different way. Change. You cannot change them until you change yourself. In Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusin. In Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusin. Allah will not change anybody until those people change the conditions of themselves. You cannot change anybody. You cannot inspire anybody. You cannot direct anybody to good unless if you direct yourself to good. Is so it? start with yourself. Become a motivated day. How can I be a motivated day? I must inspire myself to do da'wah. I must gain the knowledge. I must learn how to be sincere. And I must have the traits and skills of becoming an eloquent, effective da'i. Are you motivated to do da'wah? Ask yourself this. Did you benefit from this episode? Will you start doing da'wah insha'Allah? Not today, wait a minute. I still need you to attend the other programs, the other episodes of this program. I need you to take some notes. I need you to delve deeper into this topic because there are some things that you may not be able to do on your own. But if you attend a course like this or a program like this and you listen to different verses of the glorious Qur'an and different ahadith and opinions of scholars, then insha'Allah you will be able to be an inspiring, eloquent, motivating da'i who is able to encourage the world insha'Allah, but you will start with yourself first. Jazakumullahu khayran wa barakallahu fikum. Thank you for watching this episode insha'Allah. Until next time, this is your brother Rayyan Arab. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bye. Uh -huh.